on here. We're standing on the slide of the biggest obstacle course in the world, ABC's newest show, Wipeout. All right, well, I'm going to find a few people to interview. Let's learn more about this awesome new show. What was your inspiration for coming up with this show idea? Well, I was the executive producer on Fear Factor, and my partner on this show, Scott Larson, who's the other executive producer on this show, also worked on Fear Factor. And we loved doing that show. We did 150 episodes, and after six years, it went off the air, and, and we were sitting around saying, okay, it's, it's been about a year, and the time's right for another big network stunt show. So we wanted a show that had kind of all the fun of Fear Factor, but none of the gross. So we came up with Wipeout. Explain a little bit about the structure of the show. We start each show with 24 people, and they're all shapes and sizes. You do not need to be an athlete to, to, to come and do the show. In fact, if you're an extreme athlete, we don't want you. So we really want kind of the average, average everyday person. Those 24 people do what we call the qualifier. It's a four-part obstacle. The fastest 12 advance to the next round. There's a big group stunt where all 12 do that stunt. That's called the sweeper. The last six standing move on to a, another round. Uh, and in that round, we go from six to four and then those four people come to the wipeout zone. And that's what we're going to see tonight. we're going to see tonight. So this is the control room. The director, Rupert Thompson, is right here. He's watching all of these cameras. There's probably, what, 10 point of view cameras. Today, I think he has okay, 10 regular cameras, so we have a total of 20 cameras. Right now, we're doing the rain test. So he's just looking at it to make sure the lighting is right and that the cameras are all in the right position, the cameras aren't getting rained on, and that we can actually shoot the show in the rain. So test that all out, and then we'll get the contestants out and shoot the show. And once the contestants are out there, it's a one-take deal, right? It's one take once they start the stunt. We never interrupt a stunt, but we do stop and go as we get them in and do a pre-interview and a post-interview and reset the, the actual apparatus. Like I said, we have to reset all the barrels. But once the contestant's up and we say go, unless there's a safety issue, we don't stop. I'm here now with the special effects coordinator. Caius Mann. Caius Mann, and he's going to tell us a little bit about coordinating the special effects. Uh, yep, well that's what we're doing. I got uh, 16 guys here working, operating rain bars, fire effects, fans, uh, smokers. We've got about 65 different elements working the scene all at once. What's the most challenging element to work with? Uh, actually the fans have been the most challenging element, which it shouldn't be, because these fans are 100 year old machines that are pretty much bulletproof, but for some reason our electricians, not so much making power for them. So that's been the biggest challenge so far. So Rich, you're the contestant producer here on Wipeout. So what, what does that entail, actually? What is what is your job? Uh, basically, I put together uh, all the shows. I get people from ages, you know, 18 to 63, every different type of personality. Because this game is all about personality. It's all about humor. It's about having fun. It's a show that you can watch, and you just want someone to entertain you. That's what the show is all about. So can you tell me a little bit about the casting process? Like, if I decided I wanted to be on season two of Wipeout, uh, what, what would I have to do to sort of get on the show? Uh, you'd go to ABC.com, you'd go under the casting section at the bottom, and then you'd look for Wipeout. There's two ways to do it. Some, we do open calls in different towns, and you can go to one of those. Otherwise, you can submit uh, a video, like a five-minute video, uh, and there's an address that's provided in the thing that you would send it to. And you, the video is just, once again, it's you being you, you know, you and your element. Show that side of you that no one else has seen that you want to be on TV, or something that your friends will find funny. Those are the things we look for. People that want to be on Wipeout, bring it on. Today at ESPN Zone, as you can see, there's people flying in from all over the U.S. to have the opportunity to be on the show. And everyone has their own story. I'm still on Kansas City, Tom. What makes an ideal candidate for Wipeout? It is... First of all, it really is a show that is for everyone. You've got the energy, you've got that competitive spirit. Kenny Hahn is in the house, guys. Yeah. You're tenacious, you've got perseverance, and you're ready to take on those big red balls. You're a good candidate for the show. Most people today will come into the studio and actually do an in-person audition. So start off by telling me your name, your age, your hometown, and what you do for a living. In that order? In whatever you want. <laughs> and then from there, we pre-screen and prep these people and tell them, this is what we're looking for in the room. If you have any special skill, if you are double-jointed and can bend your thumb back to your wrist, if you can touch your nose with your tongue, show us. 
small hands. I can almost feel no pain. And a weird thumb. I'm pain immune. Uh, I can put both of my feet behind my head. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> We ask questions, you know, what are they going to do with the $50,000? I really would like to buy an island with a bunch of women on it, but I need to remodel my house for my new child coming up. <laughs> what is the story we're going to remember them by? Why are they going to be a great person that America's going to love to see on television? And then if they're called back, they go through a whole other process. Cool, thanks guys. We test medical and put them through background and, and make sure everything checks out. And then once they pass that, they go to our executive producers and then the network and then hopefully they make the show. Come down and audition at our next open call event or fill out your application at mysticartpictures.com. You're good. Okay. big Super Bowl episode of Wipeout, and of course, I am your, your referee. In this special, we have cheerleaders versus couch potatoes, so we changed the whole course. It's all got a football theme to it, so all the stunts have something to do with football. The team of 14 really hot cheerleaders, and then just 14 really schlubby guys. Some characters in the crowd, a little different than normal, straight up deviant behavior. I get to co-host with Michael Irvin, who is the Hall of Famer. He's amazing. Oh, oh, head first. Wow. Did you see that? He's won three Super Bowls. I mean, I'm going to have him, like, autograph my hand and never wash it. And he's a really cool guy. He's really funny. Oh. Every episode we have a contestant where they get up to right where the big balls are and they look down and they don't realize it's a little bit farther than you think when you're watching TV. I mean, it's hard. Sometimes people chicken out. No, nobody chickens out this time. Nobody chickens out. I'm here to make sure people continue to go through the course and not pause. If they stop, I get to motivate. Motivate sometimes means words, but also sometimes meet girth. I get to knock them off the pedal slip they don't go. And the motivator's good. That guy is awesome. He's almost seven feet tall, and he's up there to sort of give people the shove. <laughs> It's going to be a shock at first. I think they're going to say, oh, there's a tree standing here. But no, you know what? I'm going to move up behind them, give them a little motivation, tell them what's going on, tell them to get going. If they don't, they're going to have to go in the water. Uh, so basically, if you're not motivated to jump, the motivator motivates you. Some of these cheerleaders are so physically fit compared to some of these guys. Our guys can talk big game, and they can make big splashes, but I don't know if they'll make it to the end. I'm going to go off on the other side of the fence and say a cow potato, just because I like to pull for the underdog, and I'm pretty sure they're the underdog here. <laughs> Make sure to watch the special at halftime during the Super Bowl on ABC. This season we're doing a couple special episodes. We're doing Blind Date, we're doing Family, uh, we're doing Couples. We have Ladies Night, which I'm looking forward to. Today it's Blind Date Wipeout, so we're shaking it up a little bit, having fun. Yeah, Wipeout's making history. They got me a good partner. I'm kind of excited. Have you seen the other groups? Tons and tons of love connections here today. Obstacle course. Yep. I mean, who doesn't want to run over a giant obstacle course? You know, the headband. Look at that. I just thought it would be a whole lot of fun and experience to have. Win 50 grand. What she said. We put together 12 guys and 12 girls, and there's some reason why they should maybe be a couple. Well, she wants to run on my left, and I want to run on the right, so so far we're all good with that. <laughs> they, look <laughs> they look like they're really well paired, right? Actually, he's going to follow me. Eh, got some strategies, I guess. Yes, exactly. And since I can't swim, it'll be easier for her to throw the life preserver to me. I'll just jump in. Because, it, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Run. <laughs> you got to jump over a sweeper arm, and I'm just hoping I can get enough height. They have to compete together as a team and try to win 50 grand. So it's a lot of fun. Adds a little extra something to the already spectacular wipeout course. 
So today on blind date, they obviously they start up on the ramp behind us. Then they have to come together as a couple and they go over the springy tops over here. You have to hold hands, run the course, and try to get through the mud, hopefully. We plan our stunts for about 10% success, 90% failure. So, so far, I think we're, we're hitting our mark pretty good. Once they exit the mud, they go over to the sucker punch wall. Now the sucker punch wall this year, it's the new and improved sucker punch. One of our fan favorites, but we added paint. If they make it successfully from the sucker punch, they go up the ramp to the famous big ball. started showing them how to successfully get across the big balls. And you think, oh, why would you do that? Well, it gives them confidence. Confidence gives them speed, and speed gives us great wipeouts. You have to jump over these four trampolines. It would be nice and easy just to jump over trampolines, except we put the swinging sweeper bars that are basically taking their legs out from under them. And you can see the final stunt in the background. This final stunt here, it's basically the bar swing, and you just have to run across the ramp and avoid the bar. I think the reason people want to be on this show, first of all, because it's fun. I get a chance to be a clown. Generally to be hilarious. You get to be a big kid for the day. When do I get a chance to do that? Secondly, there's $50,000 involved. When I win, I will probably throw a few mercy bucks her way. She wants to go to Australia. We can make that happen. What? <laughs> I'm gonna probably buy myself a new car and we can go on a date. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take them out. Totally. And third, I think, just to kind of prove to themselves that, yeah, they can still do this. Watch out for the W. And we're always trying to shake it up. When? Whoa, hey, come on. The course is constantly changing, the themes are changing. It's our job to just kind of keep it fresh. <laughs> Every week, we want the audience to tune in and, and to be surprised by what they see. Break out the napkins and the silverware, because you're about to get served. Correct. <laughs> So we're here with season three of Wipeout. Yeah. Wipeout is the third most popular game show in the world. What the hell is everybody <laughs> thinking when they come on this show? Quite frankly, I was surprised we dropped that far. I think it may have been the seeding. You know what I mean? It's like the NCAA tournament. Yeah. It just depends on who you draw in the quarters. This season, the course is entirely different. Definitely some surprises. Every time I think we've exhausted every possible opportunity to make people fall down, they come up with something so hideously dastardly. Yeah, definitely some surprises. It's about obstacles that you don't see. The contestants kind of come into this thinking they know the course because they've seen a couple seasons of it, but we have surprises all along the course. We've added trickeration into the obstacle course now. This year, we call it Sucker Punch 3.0. The punch wall, we've stepped it up a notch. The, uh, some of the punching arms are about twice as long as they used to be. And there's giant paint squirts that come out in their face. Kind of like a bank die exploding in their face. This is a new stunt on the course behind me. It is the trampoline run. Jumping over swoop bars seems to work pretty good, depending on the contestant. I'm not sure if this next person is going to do it very well. The big balls used to be my favorite, not anymore. Did a little switch up this year because the motivator we've been using, everybody noticed it, knew it was there because they'd been watching it for a few seasons, so nobody was stopping the top, everybody was running off. It's a different kind of motivator. I'm not even going to tell you about it, you'll just have to see it. <laughs> There's something so universal about the physical humor that it transcends cultures, age ranges. Everybody loves to watch people fall down. You're gonna, oh, no. America's Funniest Home Videos has been on, what, 20 years? Like, there are certain things that just don't get tired. Of course, it's gonna not only create great wipeout, but make us all laugh. The pratfall is literally the molecule of comedy. Because I know if I'm laughing, then you guys are laughing. It is comedy in its smallest possible form. And that's the goal. It, you know, appeals to everybody. To help make your home camera ready, the makers of Clorox Bleach are proud to present Tips from the Set. Everybody. I'm your host, Teresa Strasser, and I'm coming to you from the set of ABC's smash reality game show, Wipeout. Wipeout is known for its giant obstacle course that produces some epic spills. And as you can see, the crew is hard at work building the latest and greatest gauntlet that will inevitably send contestants to quite the soggy predicament. And here to explain the method to the madness is course designer Matt Pennington. 
Obviously, we're here in your workspace. Yes. What are you building now? Right now, we're about a week out from shooting, so we're kind of doing all of the finish work, getting all of the obstacles out of the shop and into the actual course. Today, that's kind of a slow process. But it's so beautiful out. You know, it's a lovely day here on the lovely. ranch. And uh, we're doing the best we can. Do you have to keep the obstacles pretty secret? We do. There's a lot of people that are really curious, and all the contestants do research before they come they on the do. show. Absolutely. Okay, so you really can't tell me anything. Not about this season. I can't right. tell you anything. So, in your opinion, what gives the contestant a better chance? Physical prowess or general insanity? Good combination of both, actually. Uh, physical prowess, I think, would be essential. It's definitely not an easy thing to get through, any of these courses. But you kind of have to be a little crazy to come on the show and uh, to try some of this stuff out. So uh, it is a 50, little both. 50. I think it's probably more, you know, 70, 30. Okay, 70 <laughs> Crazy to <prowess>. physical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Out of all the contestants that have passed through your obstacles, does anybody stand out for you in particular? I think Rhino Man. Oh, yeah. Rhino charge, baby! Here I come! Rhino and Pig, we you see what happens here, man! It's gonna be ripped to shreds! Farewell, Hams! <laughs> What's the best obstacle you've ever built? My personal favorite is probably the flush from last season, which was a 60-foot tall slide with a, you can imagine, a phone booth on top that the contestant stands in. We dumped 500 gallons of water into the phone booth, and then the bottom opened and dropped you 60 feet out into the sky. Do you have trouble sleeping at night knowing the diabolical things you put people through, your fellow humans? Not at all. I sleep like a baby. I love my job. I love this place. I love this work. Let's get wiped out, baby! Yeah! People have fun here. The contestants have a good time on the show. That's part of why we love it so much and enjoy it, is that we get to create these kind of crazy things that no one else gets to do and share them with people. I think all of us have gotten a little dirty at one point or another, even if it wasn't from falling into a giant mud pit. Well, thanks to Matt Pennington for taking us down Wipeout memory lane. All of you can catch upcoming episodes of Winter Wipeout only on ABC. We'll see you next time on ABC's Tips from the Set. Hi, I'm Matt Kunitz, creator and executive producer of Wipeout. When we were working with Activision, we decided that we wanted to do a challenge that was Activision branded. And so it was like, well, what could we do that would be really cool that sort of fits into the game? And we said, well, what if we take, you know, like a, a spinning disc and put our hosts on the disc? And then people have to run and then the hosts are actually slamming into them. So it's great for us because you know, we'll be able to make a lot of comedy and have a lot of fun with the idea that, you know, they just got whacked by John or Jill just smacked him into the water or, you know, or, or, or they, you know, or they got interrupted by a big loud horn. Hi, I'm Scott Larson, creator and executive producer of the television show Wipeout. You know, it's been fun working with Activision. I actually like it watching the game and looking at the ideas. They come up with new ideas and I'm coming up with ideas based on their ideas, so we're kind of working together now. So, it's a good team. Hey guys, surprised to see the set of Wipeout all decked out in snow? Well, that's because we're on the Winter Wonderland edition of Wipeout. So, get ready to see your smacks, whacks, and splashes on this season of Wipeout. Why Winter Wonderland? Why not Winter Wonderland? People like watching people fall down. When do most people fall down? In the winter, when they're slipping on snow and ice. We figured if we're airing in the middle of the winter, let's do a winter, crazy winter wonderland. And, and so here we are. I love this new set. This is fun. I mean, we have, we have polar bears. We have snowman. We have ice. And we have, obviously, tons of snow. Have you done this obstacle at all? No, 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 and I never have. You see me walking upright, don't you? I do not run the course. I will not run the course. I have the best job in the world, and mainly because I don't have to do this. You would be interviewing me in Cedar sinai had I run this course. How'd you guys do? Uh, I think we did pretty good. He did better than I did. I got my butt kicked on the first stunt. I went over it like three times on the pinwheel. It's so hard getting through that. I mean, we watch it at home, we're like, we could do that, but no, when you're doing it, I don't care what you say, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's a course designed for failure, so if you finish the course without wiping out, we've done something wrong. You're going down on this course, that's all there is to it. The first part of it is, I think it's called the snowblowers. I don't think anyone's really ever did that gracefully. They're going so fast, and when you first, because that's when you first hit the mud, like you see that whelp, I mean, you hit hard, you see that? Get that ain't off. fake, that that's fake. real. I mean, it, it, it was hard. And you mean to tell me no one has ever gotten through this course? Not even close.
This is a show about real people, average people. Maybe people that are not so average that you would never expect to see on an obstacle course. That's what makes this fun. It could be you, your sister, your neighbor, it's relatable. We look for a combination of athleticism and mental instability. The best type of wipeout is when you're ricocheting off of something. When you just fall straight into the water, that's not fun. But when you run and you slam into something, bounce back, hit something else, flip upside down, that's the best. I think it's when you're walking in a crosswalk and there's tons of cars and you fall like I did the other day and someone yells out, Oh, wipe out! <laughs> that actually happened to me. Ouch! Better her than me. This is Claude Rogers with Carbonated TV. invited Activision out to set again. We've started to show them all of the stunts that we're doing and saying, okay, this is what we've got going. We want the game to feel as realistic and to really feel like you're actually on the actual obstacle. So the more time that we spend with Activision, then it's gonna make it a real great experience for, for the players. <laughs> Wipe Out the Game was a huge project for us and a ton of fun because it's like, I mean, I think that's everybody's dream to like be able to create a video game. Room Sucker Locker Locker Boom! This is for all the scary cats! Black Thunder says only you can defeat fear! Boom! 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 Defeat fear! Black Thunder! I think the beauty of the show and it's uh why it's so successful and why we are still able to get so many great people to literally throw themselves at the, the course as well as the big red balls is because you watch it and you go, I could do that. Or, you know, we're watching it from a, a third point of view. So we're like, oh, all you got to do is jump over that. Or you see that coming. You've got to know at the end of a walkway, it's going to flip up. Just jump or look to the side or swim better. So everyone goes into it, I think, a little overzealous. And they're, they're ready to go, I can do this. I can do this. And they don't realize that it's a lot of stamina. I peed in a light socket! Oh, now it's all coming together. Vanessa, could you lend us a hand on this one? Why did you pee in the socket, Roger? Lazy? No. Lazy is not lifting the toilet seat. Did you get electrocuted? Just a little tingle. Thanks. Kids, don't try this at home. Don't worry. But my husband um, and my brother-in-law are, because obviously they're brothers, are dying to do it. And I'm all about it. I would love to sit there dry and warm with a mic in my hand and just watch them throw themselves at the qualifier. <laughs> it's fun to go to work every day, and that's what I love. And that's what I, I missed was uh, something I had back at my days at MTV and TRL. I literally just miss being able to enjoy going to work every day and it's it's back again and it's a good feeling. Always pushing people to do their best by giving them one nudge in the right direction. Don't take your time on the ball. Well, we'll agree to this. We're standing in front of the balls. They're famous. I'll tell you something, I'm always standing in front of the balls. It's just a special thing for you today. I'm always standing tall before the balls. What's up, guys? Leslie Robbins here for YHN. We are behind the scenes at Wipeout for this episode of Quiet on Set. But on this set, there just is no quiet. Hey guys, I'm Vanessa Lachey from Wipeout, and you're watching Young Hollywood Network. Okay, so this course, to me, seems like a video game. It seems like a 12-year-old boy was watching a video game and he said, how can we make this for humans? How did you come up with the idea if that wasn't the idea? It's interesting you say that, because when we designed it, we did think sort of video game, and we were thinking, trying to put ourselves in the mind of a 12-year-old. Scott Larson and I did Fear Factor together, and when we did that, we knew that it was a great family show, and that people 
you know, love to watch it together. So the kids would love it, the adults would love it. So when we were designing this show, we said, let's come up with another show that's all the fun of Fear Factor without the gross. Have you ever done the course? No, I haven't, which is why I'm standing here with you today, fully ambulatory and dry. No, I'm too smart for that. Do I want to be ridiculed by our crew of 300 people? No way. Would you ever do this course? Would you ever have an inkling to just jump on this? Have an inkling? No, but I would do it for the sake of empathy. Like, I want to be able to have an understanding when I stand up here and I say, so you just threw yourself at the big balls. I want to say I did the big balls and I know what it's like. So I think um, I think I have to try it at some point. I think you should place a bet somehow and then if you lose, you have to do the course. Yeah, no thanks. They don't want me on the course, trust me. They would, you would, you would have to be uh, shooting this in Cedar sinai where I'm in recovery. Speaking of the people that are on the course that you cast, who are you actually looking for to get on the course? pretty simple. We're looking for big personalities and we're not really looking for athletes. I mean, believe it or not, we don't want your X game athlete out here. It's not fun to watch. So today's a perfect example. It's hotties versus nerds. These guys, the guys are just huge personalities. The girls are hot. Can't go wrong with that. All right, now let's talk about the balls. We're standing in front of the balls. They're famous. I'll tell you something, I'm always standing in front of the balls. It's just a special thing for you today. I'm always standing tall before the balls. Do ball jokes ever get old and do you ever run out of ball jokes? Let me tell you something. We have a warehouse of ball jokes that is not unlike at the end of Indiana Jones, that enormous warehouse that goes on forever. We categorize and log every single ball joke, um, but uh, we haven't even scratched the surface. I have yet to begin making ball jokes. They can make a lot of ball jokes. I'm actually getting good with my ball jokes. Best one? You'll have to watch. I've got some good ball jokes. But no matter how good I think my ball joke is, Henson has to trump it with his ball comment on my joke, and it always makes it just that. It's like the zing that I was missing. Gosh, he's so good. So what advice would you give contestants if they asked you? Um, I think the biggest thing is just speed and get through it. Just just look at the end. Uh, get your affairs in order. <laughs> um, make peace with your maker, and uh, kiss your ass goodbye. So if you can create your own team of celebrities to do this course, who would who would be on your team? The funny thing is about celebrities is uh, we're, they're always tweeting us saying, and, and big ones are saying like, I want to run the course, I want to run the course. And we're like, come on down, but we have to film it. I don't want to run the course. So, you know, if Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt want to come, they're welcome to. I think for an engagement present, you can get Brad and Angelina a day on the course. That would be great. I would be willing to do that. I'd be willing to open up the course Brad and Angelina, if you want to come, it's an engagement present. I give you the wipeout course. Give me one example of a time that you literally wiped out, your own personal wipeout. Uh, you know, I, I can actually share with you uh, about a year and a half ago, a buddy of mine was in town. There just happened to be a torrential downpour in LA and it rained so hard that there was a, probably about four feet of puddle running, to the, uh, running alongside the curb. And I was trying to jump the puddle to go into a bar and when I, <laughs> When I hit the floor, my feet went out from under me and I went down so hard that I actually heard someone say, oh my God, did you see the guy from Wipeout just wipe out? And I was like, it's come full circle. This is, this is what I have earned karmically, that I'm literally sitting on the ground on my butt on Hollywood in the torrential rain while people laugh at me. I was running across the house to tell my parents um, some exciting news. Um, I was gonna do something with my high school and I ran into the sliding glass door and almost broke my nose, needed stitches in my lip, cracked my tooth, it's actually still cracked. This front right tooth is cracked in here. Did you make it to the bar after the fall? <laughs> this is the God's honest truth. So I wipe out on Hollywood Boulevard, I'm not kidding. And I looked down and I had actually, I had hit the ground so hard I tore my jeans and I was like, I'm so hurt. And I, my buddy we went into the bathroom of the bar and I pulled my pants up and my knee was busted open and he was like, do you want to stay for a drink? And I was like, I have an open wound. <laughs> two drinks, we'll stay for two drinks, and then we'll go. My nickname in high school, which I'm not proud of, was Grace, <laughs> because I was a klutz. I, my dad, of course, was the one that started the nickname. Thanks, Dad. I'm like the bird in the Windex commercial. <laughs> Clearly can't see the glass door. That's me, Wipe Out. I'm John Henson, co-host of Wipe Out, and you're watching Young Hollywood Network.
Ezra Behar here for Clever News, and today I'm hanging out on the set of Wipeout in beautiful Canyon Country, California. host of Wipeout, John Henson. Hi, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Are you tempted to get out there? Because I can throw in a good word. I mean... When you came up with this concept, did you have any idea the impact that it would have, the cultural phenomenon that it's become? You always hope as a TV producer that, you know, any show you have will have some impact. Um, those are few and far between, so, you know, this was... We didn't go into this saying like, this is going to be around 100 episodes later and you know airing 150 countries. That for us is a thrill. Like we just won the Kids Choice Award in our fifth season, and it's like, wow, it's great. Yeah. And what I love about that award is that it's the kids that are actually voting on it. It's not there's no politics involved in that. It's just kids oh. sitting down going, do I like Idol or do I like Wipeout? Checking Wipeout, you know. So that that makes me happy as a producer. It's our job to always make the show evolve. You know, if if it, if it feels stale to us then the audience is going to feel the same way. So our challenge is to constantly be coming up with new ways of surprising the contestants because they think they know what to expect now. It's a challenge for us, but I think that we've done really well at sort of keeping up to that challenge and, and keeping the course fresh. Did you know that these balls would take on a cultural phenomenon of their own? I always had confidence in my balls. I don't think I ever thought that they would become this big. You know, when we designed the big balls, we never thought that they would become sort of the icon of the show. Um, Scott Larson, who's the co-creator with me, was um, walking through Toys R Us just trying to get ideas, and he saw, you know, I guess it was a ball like this big, and he was thinking like, okay, this would be cool if you could sort of bounce on this, but what if we made it bigger? And so then we went online and we saw this company, Sportigo, so we called them up and we said, hey, could we, you know, bounce someone on top of that? Like, would that be possible? Would it pop? And, and we explained what we were doing and they said, Probably the ball that we make would, but we can, you know, super reinforce the ball for you. And, and they did, and then we brought it out here and started playing with it, and we're like, this is amazing. Yeah. And the thing about the big balls, it's like a fingerprint. Nobody hits the big balls the same way as the person before them. My balls don't quit. And I think that says everything that needs to be said about them. Now here's the tip we give this to all the contestants at the beginning of the day, okay? Speed and momentum. That's your friend on the wipeout course. Uh, it does two things. One, speed and momentum gives you a better wipe out for us, for TV, for the audience. If you go fast, you might make it. If you don't, at least you got further down the course. I work out at least like an hour a day, so it didn't really help in the situation. Having an extreme athlete out here is not fun to watch. It's having you out here that, you know, that's more fun. When I wiped out the first time and I started to swim and I kicked my legs for the first time, I said, there's no energy left in this body. And then I had to climb a ladder and another one, and another one, and I'm still standing, so we'll leave it at that. I've always had empathy for the contestants, which is why I think I should do the course. Yes. Because I want to do the course and really stand up there and go, I know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. I've done this. I've, I've wiped out. I've thrown myself at the big balls, and I came out on the other end, so it's going to be okay. It's just very simple physical slapstick humor that every, excuse me, I apologize. <laughs> You're talking them down, call me down. These trying people to are like legit down. out of breath when they're done. They, they are. They barely listen to you. Yeah, and I have to shove a mic in their face and make good TV. It's uh, craft services, my bad. Let me tell you something, that's how you do it. That's textbook right there. It only gets worse from there on out. Every time I watch it and I laugh, I feel like I'm going to hell. Kinda. That's Can the you... interesting thing about you actually are going to hell. The reality is that this is not the first season, so everyone coming on this course knows exactly what they're getting into. We like to say that this show is painfully funny. Why should we tune in this season? What is going to be bigger and crazier and better than seasons before. Well, if you've liked Wipeout in the past, then you got to watch this summer because literally every season we go the next step above and beyond the call. And uh, I think at this point the course is breaking some of the laws of the Geneva Convention. So just tune in to see us push the limits of humanity again. They want to come out here and, and challenge themselves and, and have a good time. And most people, they'll, they'll say two things. That was a lot harder than I ever thought it was. Like it looked so much easier on television. They also say that was the most fun I've ever had. So 
you should feel okay laughing at them. Good night and big balls. Hey guys, Deidre Behar here, and I'm on a set of Summer Wipeout, but you would never know it. I am freezing my big balls off. Today I'm checking out the course, what's going on with season six, and of course we're celebrating the 100th episode. Okay, so apparently we're on set here in Alaska, on yes. the set of Wipeout. Yes. Uh, is it usually this chilly when you guys shoot? Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. We're up here in the canyons and uh, the wind does whistle. It can get a little cold. And this is summer wipeout. So try to picture what winter wipeout is like. You should probably take off your coat. I'm so warm out here. Uh, uh, no way. But you know, 100 episodes. Let's First of all, let's get yeah. the high five out of the way. How about that? I mean, the little engine that could. Did you think you'd be here six seasons later? No, I honestly never did. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was thrilled just to have a job. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of us anticipate that anticipated that Wipeout would turn into what it's turned into. I mean, when we started this, you know, I thought, okay, it'll, it'll probably go a couple seasons. Um, but really, I mean, kids and families have really uh, latched onto the show, which is a good thing. There's a video game, there's an app, there's all, all kinds of merchandising, it's in a million countries. And uh, 100 episodes is huge for any show. Going straight to hell, going straight to hell. Sir, I'm a little confused. A hundred episodes, you have yet to run this course. Do I need to talk to someone? What's going on? Why don't you want to try it? I'm going to be honest with you. The show could run a hundred thousand episodes. I'm you not going to run the course. I have said time and time again, I want to do the course. Okay. Um, my only stipulation is that John Henson does it before <laughs> me. That's like asking Dr. Drew if he's tried heroin. I am on the other side of that equation. I'm on the I'm on the preventative side. Yeah, that's my, that's my deal. As long as he does it, I will do it. So you just finished the course. Now I overheard you're a bodybuilder. You uh -huh. did 10 years in the military. Does that have anything on Wipeout? I had to say no. Not the way I feel right now. <laughs> Brains trumps bronze. Exactly. Brains trumps bronze. Who needs the muscles when you got the smarts? We're gonna kick your ass! Did this chic fashion ensemble, would you say, would it help your agility on the course? Do you think it hindered? Definitely makes you more aerodynamic. Yes. So you can slide through the obstacles. Also doubles as a green screen, because I don't know if you guys saw the brawn. Kind of lacking in that department. Yes. And what are they doing throwing stars at people? Right? That, that is hurt. That's not very nice. But I was like, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000. I own the prize. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, I really don't understand why I thought this would be fine. Yeah? But, it was. You made it through, yeah. and you lived to tell the story. Yes, I did. Who's the first person you're going to brag to? Oh, probably my mom, and probably the lovely lady who's waiting for me at home. You know who you are? Aww. Of course, season six, why should we tune in if we haven't before? You know, uh, I think if you're a fan of the show, you're going to love the new and inventive challenges that we've come up with. Two words. Jill's back. Tune in just to see the limits of the human spine, because we test it every single week. Amen. And on that note, good night and big balls.
do with all this equipment when the show is over? Are you thinking about leaving this up and charging admission? We can have That's the brand new theme park in Southern California? Well, we're going to leave it up until we're ready to do the second season because we're, we're anticipating that we'll, we'll do well enough to have a second season. So we'll keep it up, keep it running. Um, and then we can just kind of come in quickly and of course we're going to change the census. The fans are starting, so it's going to get really loud now. Uh -oh. And I think you're probably going to start seeing leaves and stuff coming, but... The storm is coming! Ooh, I feel a little water! It there it is! <laughs>